Hey everybody, welcome. We're about to talk about comparative advantage versus absolute advantage. This is something you'll get early on in either a micro or a macro course, and you'll have to do what's called comparative advantage and absolute advantage, determining you know a country that has each of those, and then you'll probably have to do like terms of trade problems. So this is the very beginning, uh, our first video on this topic, and let me first just kind of talk about absolute and comparative advantage in general terms. And the way I want to do this is I want to kind of like just give you a scenario, okay? Let's just say we got two people, I'm going to call it Fred and Bob. And what we're going to do with Fred and Bob is we're going to send them into two separate rooms. And in these two separate rooms, they're going to have the exact same resources. And what we're going to have them do is we're going to have them make some baskets, all right? Now, it's important that we note that we're going to give them specs for these baskets, okay? They're going to have to make the baskets to the specs that we give them because we want identical baskets, no quality difference between the two goods. So let's say we send Fred into one and we send Bob into the other and we put them in there for some amount of time. We'll just call it an hour. And we say, you can make as many baskets as you can. And so in an hour, Fred comes out and he's got three baskets. And in the same hour, Bob comes out and he's got six baskets. So what does that mean? Well, to an economist, the economist would say, Bob has the absolute advantage in producing baskets. It meaning, given the same amount of resources, Bob can make more. And there's another def definition of absolute advantage. I'm just kind of take that sa same statement I just gave you, kind of just flip it around a little bit. Bob can make the same amount of baskets as Fred with less resources. Both of those ways that I just said that is absolute advantage. So let me just repeat that very quickly. If given the same amount of resources, one person or country could make more, they've got the absolute advantage. Or if we said, hey, if they made the same exact amount, but one did it with less resources, that's two is an absolute advantage. It's pretty much the same def definition. And so when it comes to absolute advantage, we could say, hey, Bob, who made six, remember Fred made three, Bob was better, and that's fine, okay, from an absolute, I, I really think when you talk about absolute advantage, you can use the word better, okay, Bob's better, Bob made more given the same amount of resources, but the question that economists want to answer is, when it comes to trade, who should make baskets? Now, given the information that I've given you, we can't decide, okay, because when it comes to trade, there's got to be some other good out there that they're going to make instead, okay, they got to trade one good for another good. We've got baskets, but what are baskets going to be traded for? So, just to recap, make sure I haven't lost you here, Bob, he had the absolute advantage in basket making, but what I'm saying is, that doesn't mean he should make baskets, all right, because when it comes to trade, we base that on comparative advantage, and when we talk about comparative advantage, we have to look at opportunity costs. In other, in other words, we're going to have to introduce another good. We're going to have to say, hey, when Bob made baskets, how much of this other good did he give up? That's what we're going to focus on when it comes to trade. Same with, Bob, same with Fred, sorry. When Fred made baskets, how much of this other good did he give up? What I'm saying is this. Now, I'm not going to talk about the other good when it comes to Fred and Bob, but here's where I'm, where I'm going with this. It may so, it might be, given the opportunity cost of some other good that's out there, that Fred maybe should make baskets. Even though Fred is worse at making baskets, it might be that Fred should make baskets and Bob should make this other good. Because it, like I said, it all comes down to this concept of comparative advantage, which is based on opportunity cost. And opportunity cost is when you do something, not how many resources did you give up, but how much of this other good. Now hopefully you followed that, but I didn't do that with any visuals, so I know it might have been a little bit hard to follow. So don't worry, in this video I'm also going to give you this example right here between Japan and South Korea, and we're going to put it all up on the board and we'll be able to follow this pretty easily, okay? And what I want to say is this is kind of more like a macro problem. The first problem I gave you was probably more like a micro problem. It was at the individual level, this is at the country level. So here we go, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got a situation that we're given 10 labor hours, and if Japan is given 10 labor hours, they can make 300 computers. And with 10 labor hours, South Korea can make 200 computers. And with 10 labor hours, they could both make 1,000 lines of code. Now, I want to be clear here, okay? What I'm saying is when I get to this dot right here, this is if Japan allocated all of those labor hours to computers. And this dot is if Japan allocated all those labor hours two lines of viable, co viable code. Same with South Korea, right? This dot right here, they allocated all of their labor hours to computers here, all of their labor hours to lines of code. So what we want to determine is both absolute advantage and comparative advantage. And when it comes to absolute advantage, just putting it right here on a PPF, and by the way, this is a PPF, that's what I'm generally using here, 
And I want to note something because a lot of people, when they think of PPFs, they think of this kind of concave shape of the curve. But in most classes, if, if your teacher uses this tool of PPFs, they're going to draw them linear. And for my example I've got here, i got 10 labor hours. That resource is 100% adaptable. And if you have 100% adaptable resource, it, it actually makes sense to draw them linear. But it's usually a simplification that your courses will do no matter what anyhow. So don't get you know um, confused just because you see linear lines when you're used to PPFs being uh, concave lines. It's something that most classes do. All right, with that said, um, just taking a look at this, who's got the absolute advantage is pretty straightforward. Given 10 labor hours, Japan can make more. That's our definition of absolute advantage. Japan has it for computers. When it comes to lines of code, given the same amount of labor hours, they can make the same amount. Neither country has the absolute advantage for lines of viable computer code. However, like I said before, when it comes to absolute advantage, that doesn't tell us who should make what when it comes to trade. Thinking about trade, we need to focus on comparative advantage. So let's go find that out. Let's go find out the opportunity cost when a country makes one good, how much of the other good are they giving up? And the key here is the slope of the PPFs, okay? And since these are linear lines, we're going to have constant slopes. And the slope of a PPF is that country's opportunity cost when it comes to these two goods. So let's do the math real quick, all right? We got Japan, 301,000. So once again, they allocate all their resources to computers. They can make 300. However, if they then wanted to say, no, 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 we're not going to make any computers. We're going to make lines of code. They would give up 300 computers to be able to make 1,000 lines of code. So I can use the intercept values as slope. I sometimes call that slope the easy way. I'm not even like reducing it or anything. I'm just going to take the intercept values and put negative 300 computers over 1,000 lines of code and that's the slope but what I also want to do is I want to get this and so it's in terms of the same amount of each good so I want to always reduce this to one of each good what I'm saying here is I want to do some proportions I want to get this opportunity cost or slope if you will in terms of one computer and I also want to get it in terms of one line of code so to do that it's a simple proportion first thing we're going to do Divide the numerator and the denominator by 300, okay? Because I want to get in terms of one computer. So 300 by 300, negative one computer. 1,000 divided by 300 is 3.3 repeating lines of code, okay? So now I've got it in terms of one computer. In other words, when Japan makes one computer, they give up 3.3 lines of code. Also, when they make 3.3 lines of code, they give up one computer. Now I'm going to do a proportion again. This time I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 1,000 because I want to get this in terms of one line of code. So that's pretty simple to do. So 1,000 divided by 1,000, of course, is one line of code. 300 divided by 1,000 is 0.3 computers. Notice the equal signs. This is the slope. This is the slope. This is the slope. It's all opportunity cost. It's all the same number. That's just the proportion. Now let's jump over here to South Korea, okay? I'm going to do the same thing, um, but let me just kind of draw this arrow and like just mark, hey, this is my information for Japan. For South Korea, I'm just going to pull it out over here, okay? So South Korea, slope the easy way, negative 200 computer over 1,000 lines of code. Remember, if they make 200 computers, they're making zero lines of code. If they then want to divert all their resources over to lines of code, they'd have to give up 200 to get 1,000. Pretty straightforward. And now I'm just going to do proportions again and divide both of these numbers by 200. So 200 divided by 200 gives me one computer. 1,000 divided by uh, uh, sorry, 1,000 divided by 200 gives me five lines of code. Now I'm just going to do the proportion one more time. This time I'm going to divide them both by 1,000. The numerator and the denominator by 1,000. So 200 divided by 1,000 is 0.2 computers, and 1,000 by 1,000 is one line of code. Now, if you followed me all the way through that, hopefully you kind of see why I wanted to get it in terms of one computer and one line of code. One computer, one line of code. Because now I can easily compare the country's opportunity cost and easily determine who has the comparative advantage. As stated before, comparative advantage looks at opportunity cost. How much of the other good did they forego? And remember, opportunity cost is a cost. So the person who had a comparative advantage in, in making a particular good is the lowest cost producer. Now keep that in mind as I go through this, all right? 
when it comes to computers. So I'm going to pick one computer, one computer. Okay. Once again, this is for Japan. They give up 3.3 lines of code. When South Korea makes one computer, they give up five lines of code. So who has it for making computers? Who has the lowest opportunity cost? Well, 3.3 is definitely lower than five. They have the lowest opportunity cost. That means they're the lowest cost producer of computers. And who should make something? Some, uh, which country should make which? The one that has the lowest cost. So since Japan's opportunity cost when they make one computer is 3.3, and South Korea again was five, they're the lowest cost producer, they should make computers. And so what I'll generally do is kind of write by the name, I'll just write the good they have the comparative advantage in. They've got it for computers. Now, jumping over here to South Korea, um, once again that was five lines of code for one computer, that's why they're not going to make that, but let's take a look over here at lines of code. When South Korea makes one line of code, they give up 0.2 computers. When Japan makes one line of code, they give up 0.3 computers. So it's very easy, once I've done those proportions, to just make the comparison. South Korea, one line of code, they give up 0.2. Japan, one line of code, 0.3. Who's the lowest cost producer? Who has the lowest opportunity cost? Well, South Korea has it for lines of code. So South Korea should make lines of code, okay? So that's it. That's the first video in this series just going over absolute advantage and comparative advantage. And remember, trade is based on comparative advantage. Just one last time, I'm going to recap absolute advantage. We look at the resource usage. It tells us who's better, but it doesn't tell us who should make which if they were to trade. Comparative advantage looks at opportunity costs, looks at how much of another good they're giving up, and it absolutely gives us the information we want when we're determining which country or which person should make which when they're, make, when they're making a trade decision. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.